Summary of Principles Involved in Accurate Thinking We have discovered that the body of man is not singular, but plural, that it consists of billions on top of billions of living, intelligent, individual cells, which carry on a very definite, well-organized work of building, developing, and maintaining the human body. We have discovered that these cells are directed in their respective duties by the subconscious or automatic action of the mind that the subconscious section of the mind can be, to a very large extent, controlled and directed by the conscious or voluntary section of the mind. We have found that any idea or thought which is held in the mind through repetition has a tendency to direct the physical body to transform such thought or idea into its material equivalent. We have found that any order that is properly given to the subconscious section of the mind through the law of autosuggestion will be carried out unless it is sidetracked or countermanded by another and stronger order. We have found that the subconscious mind does not question the source from which it receives orders, nor the soundness of those orders, but it will proceed to direct the muscular system of the body to carry out any order it receives. This explains the necessity for guarding closely the environment from which we receive suggestions and by which we are subtly and quietly influenced at times and in ways of which we do not take cognizance through the conscious mind. We have found that every movement of the human body is controlled by either the conscious or the subconscious section of the mind, that not a muscle can be moved until an order has been sent out by one or the other of these two sections of the mind for the movement. When this principle is thoroughly understood, we understand also the powerful effect of any idea or thought which we create through the faculty of imagination and hold in the conscious mind until the subconscious section of the mind has time to take over that thought and begin the work of transforming it into its material counterpart. When we understand the principle through which any idea is first placed in the conscious mind and held there until the subconscious section of the mind picks it up and appropriates it, we have a practical working knowledge of the law of concentration covered by the next lesson, and it might be added, we have also a thorough understanding of the reason why the law of concentration is necessarily a part of this philosophy. When we understand this working relationship between the imagination, the conscious mind, and the subconscious section of the mind, we can see that the very first step in the achievement of any definite chief aim is to create a definite picture of that which is desired. This picture is then placed in the conscious mind through the law of concentration and held there through the formulas described in the next lesson until the subconscious section of the mind picks it up and translates it into its ultimate and desired form. Surely this principle has been made clear. It has been stated and restated over and over, not only for the purpose of thoroughly describing it, but of greater importance to impress upon the mind of the student the part it plays in all human achievement. The Value of Adopting a Chief Aim This lesson on accurate thought not only describes the real purpose of a definite chief aim, but it explains in simple terms the principles through which such an aim or purpose may be realized. We first create the objective toward which we are striving through the imaginative faculty of the mind, then transfer an outline of this objective to paper by writing out a definite statement of it in the nature of a definite chief aim. By daily reference to this written statement, the idea or thing aimed for is taken up by the conscious mind and handed over to the subconscious mind, which in turn directs the energies of the body to transform the desire into material form. Desire Strong, deeply rooted desire is the starting point of all achievement. Just as the electron is the last unit of matter discernible to the scientist, desire is the seed of all achievement the starting place, back of which there is nothing, or at least there is nothing of which we have any knowledge. A definite chief aim, which is only another name for desire, would be meaningless unless based upon a deeply seated, strong desire for the object of the chief aim. Many people wish for many things, but a wish is not the equivalent of a strong desire, and therefore wishes are of little or no value unless they are crystallized into the more definite form of desire. It is believed by men who have devoted years of research to the subject that all energy and matter throughout the universe respond to and are controlled by the law of attraction, 
which causes elements and forces of a similar nature to gather around certain centers of attraction. It is through the operation of this same universal law of attraction that constant deeply seated strong desire attracts the physical equivalent or counterpart of the thing desired or the means of securing it. We have learned then, if this hypothesis is correct, that all cycles of human achievement work somewhat after this fashion. First, we picture in our conscious minds through a definite chief aim, based upon a strong desire, some objective. We then focus our conscious mind upon this objective by constant thought of it and belief in its attainment, until the subconscious section of the mind takes up the picture or outline of this objective and impels us to take the necessary physical action to transform that picture into reality. Suggestion and Auto-Suggestion Through this and other lessons of the Law of Success course, the student has learned that sense impressions arising out of one's environment, or from statements or actions of other people, are called suggestions, while sense impressions that we place in our own minds are placed there by self-suggestion, or auto-suggestion. All suggestions coming from others or from environment influence us only after we have accepted them and passed them on to the subconscious mind, through the principle of auto-suggestion. Thus it is seen that suggestion becomes, and must become, auto-suggestion before it influences the mind of the one receiving it. Stated in another way, no one may influence another without the consent of the one influenced, as the influencing is done through one's own power of auto-suggestion. The conscious mind stands, during the hours when one is awake, as a sentinel guarding the subconscious mind and warding off all suggestions which try to reach it from the outside, until those suggestions have been examined by the conscious mind, passed upon and accepted. This is nature's way of safeguarding the human being against intruders who would otherwise take control of any mind desired at will. It is a wise arrangement.